The success of Flight 5 is undeniable. However, one moment in particular shines brighter than the rest, the super heavy retrieval using the chopstick mechanism. This incredible achievement was the most significant accomplishment of the mission, setting a new benchmark for future flights. However, the pressing question remains, what will happen? Are there any concerns about Super Heavy or Stage Zero? And how might these issues impact future plans, specifically the schedule for Flight 6? Fortunately, SpaceX and Elon Musk have provided an important update following the inspection of Starship Booster 12. The results are encouraging and lay the groundwork for a promising future ahead. Let's dive into the latest update on today's episode of NR Studio. As we all know, after just seven minutes of operation, Super Heavy B-12 was successfully captured by the Mechazilla arm, marking an incredible milestone for SpaceX and the aerospace industry. This milestone has paved the way for a promising future in the field of reusable rockets. The possibilities it presents are truly exciting. Approximately two hours and 38 minutes after liftoff, the chopstick system began its descent, expertly guiding the booster back to the orbital launch cradle. The process was swift, and after just over three hours, the B-12 booster appeared to be safely positioned in the OLM. An additional update was provided eight hours after launch, confirming the successful connection of the booster's quick disconnect to B-12. SpaceX was ready to place the booster onto the transport cradle, allowing it to return to the production facility. The transport cradle has been deployed to the launch site, underscoring SpaceX's swift commitment to rocket reusability. Meanwhile, the rocket's underlying systems, including the OLM and water dillage systems, appeared to emerge unscathed. There were no reported damages to the ship's QD, despite the discernible flames observed as the booster traversed the center of the chopstick. These encouraging updates have affirmed that both the Super Heavy booster and the launch pad are in exceptional condition following the flight, a conclusion corroborated by Elon Musk and SpaceX. The most comprehensive update regarding Super Heavy and the launch pad was provided directly by Musk himself. He first noted that several of the outer engine nozzles exhibit slight warping due to elevated temperatures and intense aerodynamic forces. However, these issues are easily rectifiable. He later clarified that he had just inspected the Starship booster, which has now been returned to its launch mount by the arms. The appearance is impressive. However, a few of the outer engine nozzles show signs of warping due to heat, alongside some minor issues. Fortunately, these concerns can be easily rectified. The slight warping of the engine nozzles was anticipated due to the intense heat and aerodynamic forces experienced throughout the flight. Fortunately, there were no explosions or critical failures. Any other minor issues were likely associated with the sensitive systems located in the upper section of the rocket. However, due to the successful landing, the assessment and refurbishment processes will be considerably more streamlined. This prompts Musk's assured declaration that the challenges at hand are readily solvable and manageable. SpaceX has consistently provided encouraging updates on the progress of Super Heavy. They shared a captivating image of the landing process, elegantly captioned, Super Heavy powered by Raptor. Furthermore, they proudly proclaimed the achievement of launching and returning the world's most powerful rocket. These achievements exemplify the company's unwavering commitment to pushing the limits. SpaceX had previously highlighted that Starship's fifth flight test embarked on a mission featuring our most ambitious objectives to date. This endeavor aimed to showcase essential techniques integral to the fully and rapidly reusable design of both the Starship and Super Heavy. We are committed to pushing the boundaries of aerospace technology in pursuit of sustainable space exploration. On our initial attempt, Megazilla successfully intercepted the booster. This achievement is pivotal, as it signifies a critical advancement in SpaceX's pursuit of complete rocket reusability. SpaceX elaborated that launch and return are essential components of the Starship's fully and rapidly reusable design. They emphasized that thousands of specific vehicle and pad criteria had to be satisfied before successfully catching the Super Heavy booster. Thanks to the relentless dedication of SpaceX engineers, we successfully accomplished the catch on our initial attempt. These updates highlight the significant advancements achieved during this flight, paving the way for even more ambitious missions in the future. The recent positive updates have reaffirmed the success of this flight, 
establishing a solid foundation for Musk's assertion. Starship is engineered to enable the reflight of its rocket booster within an hour of liftoff. The booster re-emerges in approximately five minutes, allowing for the remaining time to be utilized for reloading propellant, as well as positioning a ship atop the booster. Certainly, here's a refined version of your text. Undoubtedly, these are ambitious objectives, and it presents a significant challenge for SpaceX to realize them at this moment. Certainly, the future brims with promise. Dan Hoot, SpaceX's communications manager, emphasized that before the ambitious future goals can be achieved, the company must first successfully complete the upcoming flights. Flight 6 stands as a pivotal first step in this journey. During a post-flight interview, Hoot remarked, the ship truly delivered an extraordinary performance, successfully navigating a controlled re-entry this time. With the flaps fully extended, we successfully touched down on the water. Hey, starships are designed to soar. As we glide through today, let's prepare ourselves for the next adventure. He hinted that SpaceX may soon contemplate utilizing the Mechazilla arm to catch the ship, contingent upon the advancements achieved. In light of the mission's success, there is no justification for the FAA to call for an investigation. Safety protocols at SpaceX were diligently implemented both at Starbase and aboard the ship, instilling confidence in the preparations for the upcoming flight. While Flight 6 is currently slated to capture both stages, this strategy is subject to change. SpaceX may choose to land the ship in the ocean once again to prioritize reliability. Nevertheless, the second catch of Super Heavy is anticipated to unfold as scheduled. In regards to the preparations, both prototypes for Flight 6 GOM S31 and B13 are advancing remarkably well. Their development is on track and indicative of a promising outcome. Last month, S31 successfully completed both cryogenic and static fire tests, marking the conclusion of its independent testing phase. B-13 has successfully undergone cryogenic testing. Once B-12 is back at the production site and SpaceX completes the refurbishment of the launch pad, B-13 is anticipated to be rolled out for static fire testing. Upon the completion of these steps, the two prototypes will be stacked and integrated tests will be carried out. With no legal hindrances apparent, I am confident that these preparations can be completed swiftly. It would be splendid if the flight could be ready for launch by the end of this year. Just a few weeks ago, the prospect of booking flights within a single year may have seemed impossible. However, it is now more feasible than ever. Are you feeling the excitement? If you're as eager as I am, reply with Flight 6 in the comments. Certainly. Here's a more polished version of your text with the requested line breaks. Then please like, share, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's development journey. Your support helps us bring you the latest in space exploration. Next, we will delve into another update concerning SpaceX, particularly the advancements regarding the vast commercial space station. Following the recent design updates for the Haven 1 module, VAST has unveiled its next phase of space station development and expansion. This initiative is deemed vital for paving the way to replace the International Space Station. On X, the company announced, VAST proudly presents Haven 2, our proposed successor to the International Space Station, at IAC 2024. Once fully constructed, Haven 2 is set to outshine the ISS in both capabilities and cost-effectiveness. VAST has confirmed that Haven 2's inaugural module will be operational by 2028, ensuring continued support for the U.S. and international presence in low Earth orbit LEO, following the scheduled retirement of the International Space Station, ISS, in 2030. Haven 2 is set to initiate its journey with the debut of a solitary module, poised for launch aboard a Falcon Heavy as early as 2028. This module will be an enhancement of Haven 1, extending its length by 5 meters and effectively doubling its usable volume. Additionally, it will feature docking ports at both ends for improved accessibility. This schedule is designed to ensure the ISS remains operational in alignment with projected timelines. It also serves as a safeguard against potential disruptions, such as an early withdrawal by Russia from the ISS partnership, which could hinder the station's functionality until the year 2030, as outlined by NASA. The Haven 2 lab has been designed to offer greater volume and power capacity 
than its predecessor, Haven One. It accommodates larger payloads, provides integration options for both experiments and equipment, and ensures sufficient power and thermal control to meet the demands of high-capacity projects. This enhanced versatility positions Haven 2 as an ideal choice for ambitious scientific endeavors. The Haven 2 lab not only fulfills NASA's fundamental laboratory requirements for the CLD program, but also adheres to the utmost standards of readiness for orbital research. VAST is poised to introduce three additional modules at approximately six-month intervals between 2029 and 2030, with the modules elegantly aligned and docked together. These modules will be fundamentally identical. However, I will tailor them to various laboratory facilities. The forthcoming modules, anticipated to be more substantial and deployed via Starship between 2030 and 2032, will see VAST introducing an impressive 7-meter diameter core module accompanied by four additional Haven 2 modules. This development marks a significant step towards the full realization of the next generation commercial space station. Nonetheless, VAST must first successfully execute the Haven 1 launch next year, which will be conducted by the Falcon 9. A significant milestone for VAST is its participation in NASA's CLD program. This collaboration marks a significant step forward in our ongoing efforts. With the International Space Station expected to retire in 2030, NASA has initiated the commercial LEO destination program. It is expected to announce a phase two winner or winners by mid-2026. With a laser-like focus on securing this contract, VAST has carefully developed Haven 2, which is poised to provide the most compelling solution to ensure continued support for the U.S. and international partners' presence in low Earth orbit. VAST CEO Max Hout stated that our primary goal this decade is to secure NASA's commercial LEO destination contract and to develop the next generation International Space Station. To realize this vision, we will initially showcase our expertise by building and managing the world's first commercial space station, Haven 1, scheduled for launch in 2025. It is clear that VAST's plans are well-defined and very promising. With SpaceX's support in both construction and operations, the VAST space station has significant potential to be a future replacement for the ISS. Let's see how it all goes. In closing, dear listeners, today's episode has come to an end. See you in the next episode.